Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? It is 2.54 a.m. And I just woke up a little bit ago. But my hair doesn't look too bad tonight. I took a shower earlier. It's getting so long at this point that um, when I lay down, it just kind of stays in place. Just crazy. I haven't had my hair this long. I don't even know when the last time was my hair was this long. Let me get out my lip balms for the video and we will get started. I have kind of a headache going on right now. Um, when I was laying down, it must have rained outside. I didn't see that it had rained outside, but um, it must have. And then I walked outside and I let the dogs outside and it was like wet, um, but it wasn't too wet. Just a little bit. So I don't know if we got like some kind of flash thunderstorm or what happened. I really don't know. Anyway, shall we begin? <laughs> I've had a really productive day today, can I just say? I, um, and I didn't, it didn't start real early. I got up and Alex was making something for lunch. I can't remember what he was making. But I went downstairs and what was he making for lunch today? Oh, he was making potatoes and asparagus. Um, he bought a bunch of asparagus and potatoes. And so he was grilling them like on the, I don't know, the, we have like this grill thing on our stove. And he was making those and then um, with like all kinds of seasoning and butter and stuff. I have the air conditioner on. I have to tell you, it is cold out. It's not cold. It's cooler outside tonight. But the air kind of feels good. But I can tell that I'm going to get cold in here in a second. So I'm going to turn the air off. And I was sitting out here earlier today listening to some of my audiobook. And, um,. It was warm, so I had the air on and the vented seats. My head is like hurting. I'm like, please go away. I took some leave before I came out here, so hopefully that will take it up. I was actually talking to Tanya about that tonight, that so many people had recommended to me to take magnesium, and because she said that magnesium really helps with her back pain. And when I was talking about like having really bad migraines and stuff, people said, you know, have you ever tried magnesium? So I took the magnesium, but like I started itching all over. I think I had like an allergic reaction to it. I talked about it on here, but anyway, but it really did take away my migraines. Like the couple times I took it, like I, like my head felt completely clear, but it's like, you know, six of one, half a dozen of the other. I mean, like, do I want to have the side effects or, um, so I don't know, maybe I'm allergic to magnesium. I have no idea or just maybe I had took too much and I should take less. I really don't know. <clears throat> so I got up and um, I made coffee and I was finishing up my vlog and one of my friends called. I talked to a bunch of people today that I hadn't talked to in a long time. <clears throat> and um, I was just like looking at the windshield. It was like fogging up and then all of a sudden it just like cleared up because it just, the heat kicked in. Um, I talked to a bunch of people that I hadn't talked to in a long time today, which was nice. And, but it was like just as I sat down to start doing something, like my phone would ring. And so I would step outside and like talk to them on the phone for a little bit. And um, so Alex ate his lunch and then he was watching, I don't even know what he was watching. He's watching some new series. I have no idea what it is. And he was kind of consumed with that all day today. I made three videos today. I felt really, really productive today. I made three videos today. I made a drama video, well, including my vlog. My vlog, my a drama video, or my a drama video, my Peterisms video, and then I posted my vlog. Now, I plan to post on all of my channels today. Alex and I were gonna make these vegan chocolate chip cookies, but, um, the day just got later and later, and by the time that we were gonna make the cookies, it was like 8.30, and I was like, I'm not gonna get the video up till 10, because I had talked to so many different people, and I was like, I'll just do this another day. So I just posted those videos. But then I washed, straight out of the wash, 
smells like gain, which I love. Um, I washed like all of the clothes that I've been wearing for like the last two weeks. And let's see what else did I do. I did, um, paid all the bills for May. And then I uh, took a shower. And um, then I, I can't think of what else I did. Oh, I made my dinner. And then I sat there and I watched a couple episodes of Schitt's Creek. Alex was watching actually a movie at that point. I watched a couple episodes of Schitt's Creek, um, which now I'm kind of like excited, but at the same, I was kind of like excited to like end the series and find out what happened. And now I know that I have like a whole other season, but I'm kind of happy about that too, because I don't want it to stop. So um, I watched a couple episodes. I think it was like three episodes of Schitt's Creek. And I listened to a ton of my audiobook today. Like I said, I'm like halfway done. I'm like more than halfway done, actually. I think I have two hours left. Let's see. Of Dead Ends, which is the book club book for this month. Where is it? Yeah, I have two hours and six minutes. It's good. Um... It's different than what I thought it would be. So I thought the whole book would be very similar to a lot of these documentaries that I've seen about Eileen Warnos. Um, and I think that's part of the problem is that I know like so much about her. So going into the book, I expected it to be just like all about Eileen Warnos. And it is, I mean, it is, it's about her crimes. But it goes in and <clears throat> it's really about, like, the first part of it, like, she doesn't even come in really until, like, the halfway mark. And the first half of it is really them trying to figure out who is committing these murders. Um, which would be really interesting if I didn't know so much about her. Like, the book, the book is good. It really isn't that bad for just, I mean, it's... Like, one of those, you know, grocery store, true crime kind of novels. It's really not that bad. Um, but, um, do you know what that Tyria Moore, oh, this was something that came out of this. Tyria Moore, who is Eileen Warnos's girlfriend, her middle name, I thought this was so funny because of Darlene Jolene Joe. Her middle name is, I think it's Jolene. Hold on a second. Ty, I think it's just Tyra Moore. Tyra Moore. Tyria Moore. Okay, Tyria Moore, middle name. I, I swear I think it's like Jolene. Because they talk about it in there. Um, I'll tell you something interesting. Eileen Warnos, I've never met somebody that ha I've never met her, but she had so many um, aliases. Like, when you're listening to this book, she has, like, all these... Like, they read her arrest record at one point, and it's, like, this unbelievable arrest record. And, like, every name that she uses is completely different. Okay, where is it? Tyria Moore. Okay, well, you're just going to take my word for it. <laughs> Um, cause I swear to God, it's Jolene. Cause when I heard it, I was like, oh my God, that's so funny. Middle name. Ugh. 10 facts about Eileen Warnos' girlfriend. Did we read this? Already? I think we read this one already. Uh, I wish I could find this. There's nothing about her. Well, anyway, it's either Darlene or Jolene because 
when they said it in the book, I was like, oh my God, because they say like, you know, Tyria something more was born on such and such day. And then they talk about like her biological mom and like her that had passed away and her dad had gotten remarried and all this kind of stuff. I do know that her mother's name was Janet. So I was listening and paying attention. I don't know how I can't remember. Do you see this one hair that's kind of like curling over? Can we talk about what's going on there? I don't know. But anyway, yeah, it's good. It's interesting. Um, it, you, like I thought it would be more about, um, I don't know. Some of the things, I, I thought it would be more about just about Eileen. And it's a, a, more about like, you know, f finding her and all that kind of stuff. Well, I will tell you what's interesting is, and it does talk about this in the documentaries, but um, it goes in and talks about her the last night, like at the biker bar, and um, like the police's inter the police the police's the police officers' interactions with her, and like what she says and things like that. And I had never heard those like specific things except for like in the court cases and stuff. So that is really interesting. Um, I was actually going to watch one of the documentaries tonight, but I thought, well, let's just do one thing at a time, Peter. So, um, I think I'm going to finish the book before I, um, start on the documentaries. I might watch Overkill next. I might do that before I watch the documentaries, because Misha said it was so good. So, I'm kind of like, and you know I love a made-for-TV movie. It's called Overkill. It's on YouTube. My book still hasn't come yet, my Dear Dawn book. So, I mean, I ordered it like weeks ago. I don't know when it'll get here. Um, but, I mean, sometime this month. I just hope it doesn't come at the end of the month. If it comes at the end of the month and I have to read 600 pages, I don't know how I'll get it done. It's on Kindle, too, I believe. So, I listened to that today. And um, I was all ready to do a book haul on my BookTube channel. And I didn't end up doing that because it got late, too. So, anyway, yeah. But I felt real productive today. I felt good all day today. It was a nice day. It was not super warm, but it wasn't super cool either. I'd say, I think it was like 60 or something today. I don't know what the temperature was supposed to be like the next couple days. But it was like 60 today. Um, they did talk about... Let's see what the weather was today. Um, they, the governor did come out and talk about... His plan to, oh my God, tomorrow's supposed to be 82. 69 tonight, we have the windows open. 82 tomorrow. 69 on Sunday, 64, 66, 63, 61, 58, 56, 59, 61. I can live with these temperatures and it goes all the way up to the 15th of being 70. So, I don't really want to discuss a lot about, because I know people have different feelings about it as well, but also because I don't fully understand yet the whole transition that Indiana is doing. And I can only speak to Indiana um, right now because that's really what I've been paying attention to as far as like us coming out of this stay at home thing. But the governor did like a four phase plan, okay? And the state of Indiana is coming out of it on May 11th, but Indianapolis issued, and, and Marion County, which is the county that Indianapolis is in, um, issued a stay-at-home order through May 15th. So, I don't know what that means. <laughs> All I know is, um, like, I was when I was reading it, here, I'll read you what I read. It was very confusing. It was basically talking about all this kind of stuff and how we're going to get to... Everything will be open and back to normal, supposedly, um, by July 4th is the governor's plan. So... Where did I read it? Is this the one I read? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Here's how the stages will work. So, we've been in stage one, okay? Um, which is us being on this... Oh, wait. The plan includes five stages. Five stages. And Indiana is already in stage one, which allowed elective surgeries, essential business, and critical in infrastructure. And then... It just did something. I don't know what it did. And now I'm, like, out of it. Okay. And then stage... Here is how state stages will work. Stage two, May 4th, which is Monday. 
and then this is May 11th for Lake and Marion counties, which is us, and May 18th for Cass County. Um, people who are 65 or older, along with those having high risk health conditions, should stay home still. Everyone is encouraged to wear face masks in public, everybody. Social gatherings can be up to 25 people as long as there's social distancing. Central travel restrictions will be lifted. So as of May, I guess ours is May 11th, not May 15th. As of May 11th, our travel restrictions are restricted. So that means we can go back to vlogging on the road again. But we'll see how. <laughs> I'm not, I mean, like, I don't have a problem, like, vlogging and driving around and vlogging, but I won't be going into a lot of places. Remote work encouraged to continue whenever possible. And then it goes in. Um, talks about the BMW, or BMW, BMV opening. Public libraries can reopen. Retail and commercial businesses will be allowed to operate at 50% capacity. Shopping malls may open at 50% capacity with indoor common areas at 25% capacity. I, who's going to monitor all of this is what I want to know. Um, after a county has been in stage two for one week, personal services like hair salons can reopen by appointment only and with social distancing. And after a county has been in stage two for one week, restaurants can reopen at 50% capacity. People will need to be to sit at small tables and not at the bar. What remains closed in stage two? Bars and nightclubs, gyms, community centers, venues, including sports fairs, theme parks, movie theaters, bowling alleys, wedding, funeral, etc. Basketball courts, playgrounds, water parks, swimming pools. Um, so I guess that's there for the pools. Adult care remains closed. Uh, casinos, campgrounds, K-12 and other educational buildings. No visitors to nursing homes or funerals. Um... Beginning May 8th, religious services may convene, but need to comply with social distancing. Churches will not be subject to 25 person social gathering li limitation. Um, okay. What is it? Oh, that's the mayor. Okay. And then stage three is May 24th. And it says, we'll continue on our delayed... Marion County will continue on its delayed timeline, but I don't know what that means. Oh, because I guess we'll be opening later. Gyms and... Okay, a series of other locations and businesses will be able to reopen at this point. Gyms and fitness centers, playgrounds, tennis courts, other facilities, movie theaters at half capacity, retail st stores and malls to 75% capacity, social gatherings of up to 100 people. And then... June 14th, more businesses will be able to open and larger gatherings will be allowed. Social gatherings of up to 250 people, retail stores and malls at full capacity, dining room services to 75% capacity. So we're about six weeks still away from that. Bars and nightclubs can reopen. But this is what's interesting about this, okay, for Indianapolis, is that Indianapolis is where the majority of all this stuff is. And we're going to be like a week behind so it really isn't june 14th it's really like june something 20 june 22nd or something dining room services to 75 percent capacity bars and nightclubs can open at 50 percent capacity cultural entertainment and tourism can open at 75 percent capacity including zoos museums etc sports venues and amusement parks at 50 percent capacity July 4th, the state will begin to open sports venues and other large facilities. Fairs and festivals will be allowed. Retail and restaurants can function at full capacity. Restrictions will be lifted at amusement parks, water parks, etc. During stage 5, officials will look at how to approach and handle the new school year. I wonder when casinos will be... Re I mean, not that I'm like in any hurry, trust. I'm not. But I'm wondering when casinos will be open. Didn't it say that in here at some point? Something about casinos. So I wonder if that means that on stage three, casinos will open. I just wonder how they're going to, like, gyms and fitness centers open May 24th. I just wonder how they're going to monitor all this is my question, you know? 
like the half capacity, the 25% capacity, all that kind of stuff. And then it says state officials expect that cases will increase with each stage, but the focus will be on making sure healthcare capacity is able to handle those cases. Okay, so I guess if they've just accepted that it's going to get worse and worse, and we're just going to reopen everything, is what they're saying? I don't know. But anyway, so that's the deal for Indiana. I don't really have anywhere to go anyway, so. I won't be doing a whole lot either way, Moira Rose. <laughs> She's from Shits Creek. Anyway. I don't know if that aligns with what you guys are doing, what you're supposed to be doing, but I do know that places like that, like when they reopen something and then if people don't follow it, they're like closing it back down again. So that could happen. Um, you know, that could happen here as well. My husband was texting me. <laughs> he wants me to come inside for a second. Okay, let me get off here and uh, I gotta rem Okay, I'm gonna get off here really quick and I will be back in two. Okay, he was showing me this laundry detergent um, that I didn't know was down there that he had gotten sent, that he had gotten sent, that was sent to him. And um, so anyway, cause I had done the laundry earlier. All right, and then I think he's going to bed. So I don't even know what I was talking about now. I was probably talking about that. Eileen Warner's book, something to do with that. Ah. This was like straight underneath the seat. You know when I lost it last night? It was right, was it the last night or the night before? It was right underneath the seat. So yeah, but I had a good day today. I feel like I'm not eating a lot, but I'm always full. And I said that to Tanya earlier today. I said, Tanya, I feel like I'm always full and I'm like not even eating that much. And I mean, and I, and trust me, I have been eating a lot while we've been, um, you know, at home and, um, on uh, lockdown and all that kind of stuff. But like in the last week, I really haven't been. And, um, she's like, well, maybe it's because you're more sedentary than usual. I go, well, I film videos and walk around the house. It's not like I'm, you know, doing Olympic training or anything like that. So I don't think that's it. I don't know what it is. I just am constantly like, I feel full. And, um, so yeah. But tonight for dinner, I had a cheese sandwich. I mean, and not, nothing that I'm eating is healthy. Um, but I had a cheese sandwich. Yes, I know we talked about starting the diet. The diet's gonna, it's gonna be next week sometime. Um, I said the first of May and I meant like, <laughs> at, figuratively speaking, like the beginning part of May. Um, <laughs> and I, I said that when Alex said something to me about the first the other day, I said, um, Monday or Tuesday or maybe Wednesday, we'll see. Um, and I may just not even announce it. I may just start it and, you know, that way then <laughs> I don't have to admit my failures over and over and over again. But anyway, um, I had a cheese sandwich and, oh, I made these, like, noodles that I had in there. This vegan ramen that I have. And um, it was, like, classic curry. It was really good. I haven't had them for a long time. I used to eat them all the time. I actually used to make those in the street corn the vegan street corn, and I haven't um, had those for a long time. I have two packages of the street corn in the freezer I saw in there. So, yeah, got that stuff in there to eat for this weekend before I start the, the big lifestyle change, which I'm so excited about. Anyway, that's about it. Oh, I know what I was doing. I was reading uh, what was like gonna happen in Indianapolis. I don't know, like, I'm kind of so used to it now. I was talking to a friend of mine today, and she said, I'm kind of like not ready for it to reopen yet. She said, I've kind of enjoyed being just at home. It's not a whole lot different than my life is anyway, um, except for that I'll be able to see people again. I really miss seeing Tanya. Like, that'll be weird. Like the first time that we like get together and drive around and get a fountain pop, I mean, it's been, 
six weeks, five weeks since we've had a, I don't even know the last time that we had a fountain pop. No, the last time would have been when we went to Meyer, and I don't know how long ago that was, four or five weeks ago? It's been a long time ago. A long time ago, it's been a long time. So, yeah. But like as far as like going out to eat and stuff like that, I'm not like in any rush to do that. And I have to also say like, <clears throat> one of the really nice things about not having gone anywhere <clears throat> is that I have saved a lot of money. Um, I've saved money on gas. I've saved money on food, on eating out, um, which doesn't mean that I have to change all of that, you know? But I know like once Alex is back to work and stuff that we'll start talking about going back out to eat. Now I can tell you with this 50% capacity thing, I'm in no rush to get back into any kind of restaurants. I mean, I don't wanna put myself in a bunch of situations, you know what I mean? Like, I'm still gonna limit stuff as much as I possibly can, but um, like I don't feel any rush to do all that. <sighs> so I don't know. I don't know. I will be reviewing some Starbucks drinks, so. <laughs> I think the time has come. Like, it's been long enough. I miss Starbucks. Which is stupid. But that's kind of like one of those little small things that I really do miss, you know? Is, um... Well, I think the thing is, is like, every day at home, I've been putting cream in my coffee because I just want to make it like a little bit special and whatever. And I put it in one of like these like, you know, plastic cups every day. But I, uh, I don't know that I'm like necessarily, like I keep on doing it and I enjoy it. But like at the same time, like I just miss like plain, like a really good cup of plain coffee. Which I could do. I don't know why I don't. I mean, sometimes in the evenings, like if we're watching TV or something, we haven't watched Handmaid's Tale in like, it's been like a week and a half. We need to watch some of that. But, um, and if I'm sitting around, like once dinner is done, like I'll make a cup of coffee and sit outside. Like I did that the other night. Like, I can't remember what night it was, but when I said I was like really, maybe that was last Sunday. God, has it been a week already? When I was saying that I was really thinking about my mom because it was like, like a day that like my mom would have loved, like temperature wise, and she had all the windows open and stuff. And I made a cup of coffee and sat outside and watched like an episode or two of Schitt's Creek. Um, I'll make a cup of coffee in the evening. Coffee in the evening doesn't keep me up. So I can drink it, like I could drink a cup of coffee right now and be completely fine to fall asleep in a half an hour. Um, it doesn't, you know, make me more awake. Now I'm kind of craving a cup of coffee. But anyway, I was thinking about this earlier because when I was growing up, I remember for a period of time, my mom had a coffee maker. And when she lived here, she had a coffee maker. But I don't remember my mom always having a coffee maker. Like, I remember she used a percolator a lot. Um, and I remember when we read, because she and I both watched the movie. I don't know if we read the book together. I think we read part of it. Um, it was when I was younger. I was like in junior high. Um, I think the closest that my mom and I ever were, were like when I was in junior high, because I really had no friends whatsoever, and it was just like at home with her all the time. And then um, when I was uh, like later in life, when we both had gotten sober, but we watched the movie A Tree Grows in Brooklyn based on the Betty Smith book. And in the book, she, the mom does some, she puts vanilla in the coffee or something to like make it taste better because like to make it last longer or something because they can't afford that much coffee. I can't remember what it is, but my mom and I started putting like a tablespoon uh, or a teaspoon of vanilla in the percolator when we would make coffee. And, um, because I would drink coffee with my mom and when I was growing up. But we also had a hot water tap, and I kind of forgot about that. Do you guys remember how some people have like the spray thing? Like we had a hot water tap, so like it was boiling water, and my mom drank a lot of instant coffee. I actually have instant coffee in the house, so I was thinking of my mom one day, this was like probably six months ago, and I got actual, I think it's like Sanka, like what they used to make back in the day. Um, 
I got a uh, a thing of it. I don't think I've ever had any of it in there because we don't have a hot water tap, so I have to boil water, heat it up in the microwave. Um, but when I was growing up, my mom drank a lot of instant coffee where you would just put, you know, a tablespoon of the instant coffee in a cup and then, um, do you guys remember instant coffee? It's so crazy to me that people drank it so much. My mom drank it a lot. Um, and it tasted really nasty too. Do you remember? It tasted like, it didn't taste like a cup of coffee. I mean, you want to talk about people today and how they're like so weird about having like the best cup of coffee and stuff. Oh my God, go drink some instant coffee. I mean, there's literally, and then if you think that's bad, try instant decaf. There's like a foam on the top of it, like a film almost, if you don't stir it all the way. And I remember my mom would make that and she would drink it. And then, um, my mom also, like, she would, re like, heat up coffee over and over and over again. Like, she would drink it, and then it would sit out for, like, a half an hour, an hour, and get cold, and she'd put it back in the microwave. And, um, the last time that, I don't know if it was when my mom went to the hospital or when she passed away, but I found, like, a mug in the microwave. <laughs> I think it was when she went to the hospital. I don't remember. I feel like lately I'm starting to forget details to stuff. I was telling somebody a story earlier today and I just for the life of me could not remember. And like that's so not like me. And I almost kind of think that the anxiety and the stress of the situation that we're in right now, because it wasn't really like, have you guys noticed like on the vlog, like I'll forget stuff and I'll be like, oh, what, what was that? I have to like look it up, you know? And that's not how, I mean, yeah, sure. Like we all forget stuff, but I feel like it's a side effect of what we're going through in the world right now because I'm not like that. Like, I'm a lot sharper than that with remembering stuff. But I'm starting to kind of, like, forget little stupid details about stuff. I don't know. I can't believe it's going to be 82 tomorrow. What a nice Saturday. <sighs> Well, hopefully I'll get up early enough that I can get some stuff done that I want to get done and enjoy the day too. I always like sit down and I go through and I pay all the bills like on the 1st of May or the first, you know, the first of every month. And it always like stresses me out so much. But at the same time, like I always have this feeling of complete relief. Like once I've paid them all off, like once they're all paid, you know? And I can, no matter what's left over, if it's not a lot, you know, it's just, it still feels, I was telling Tanya that tonight. It's like, if I would have ever said, you know, 20 years ago that like one of my kind of favorite things is paying all the bills at the beginning of the month, but there's a feeling to me of just, I don't know of like, well, that's taken care of for a month, you know, like. Um, I don't know. And I enjoy doing that stuff too, you know? And I've talked about this on here before, but like I balance my checkbook down to the penny. Like I literally still keep a checkbook. I actually was talking to the girl at the bank about it I, one day because she, I asked her for um, the, the checking balance books. And because I always ask for, you know, like every two months or three months, I'll ask her for like a couple more. And um, I said, am I the only one that balances checkbooks, like balances a checkbook anymore? And she was like, oh no, you would be surprised. And I said, oh really? Everybody probably over 80, right? And she said, no, it's a lot of younger people too. She was like, you're not the only one at all. And um, it's just like something that's always made me feel very safe. I can remember when like doing financial stuff with my dad when I was like younger and like, <laughs> you know, I bounced a check and my dad was like, okay, you know, like I'm never gonna help you with this situation again. And like, he taught me how to pad my account and all that kind of stuff. And I've just been like padding my account like ever since then. And, um, you know, I just round up and whatever. And <clears throat> that's why I take every receipt. I like add all my receipts up together. I probably have, well, I think I only have one receipt in here because <clears throat> I've gotten gas since the last time that I went. Where is my wallet? 
I haven't used my wallet in so long. Uh, um, I don't even know if I have one receipt in here. I have one receipt in here. <laughs> That's it. Um, and I bet it's for gas. So that's the only thing I've done. Yep, it's for gas. And my gas tank was almost empty. And it cost me $20.13 to fill my tank. Because gas is so cheap. I actually think I was at like a fourth of a tank. And it was a dollar. It says a dollar fifty-six. It was a dollar fifty-nine, but I get three cents off. So does it say how many gallons I got in here? I don't even know how many gallons my car is. I have no idea. 12.8 gallons. Maybe I had more gas in my car than that. I don't know. Oh, I know why I filled it up. Um, somebody told me, I can't remember who it was. Maybe it was Tanya. I don't even know. The last time I filled up this tank, that receipt's been in there for a while. I, I cleaned out the receipts like a week and a half ago, and then I got my gas filled sometime within that. And I'm still sitting in almost a full tank because um, <laughs> my car literally just is, sits right here <laughs> all day long. So I've saved so much money in gas. Um, but somebody, I, can't, I think it was Tanya, so that gas was starting to go up again. And I was afraid it was gonna jump to like $3, so like I ran up to the gas station and filled my tank. It's gonna be weird like going and doing stuff. I, I think there's some, you know, like I, I wonder how they're gonna open the pool. Well, the, it says pools can't be open, but <clears throat> pools don't open in Indianapolis till the 31st of May anyway. So I wonder what they're talking about with pools. Indiana. Let's see if we can find that article again that I just read. Is this the article that I just read? Didn't it say pools in here somewhere? I know it did. Okay. What remains closed in stage two? Swimming pools. But you know what? It doesn't say, like, when you go on to stage three... It doesn't say, like, what will stay closed. I mean, it doesn't ever address pools. But by June 14th, it says sports venues and amusement parks at 50% capacity. So it sounds like they'll be opening pools up at the same time that they'll be... I don't know. I'm just not planning on going a whole lot of places. I have really nowhere to go anyway. Now, when they <clears throat> open like Florida up again or beaches down there, and I don't want to be on any packed beach, but I am going to start looking at some Airbnbs and stuff. Um, I don't know how I feel about getting on a plane right now. I mean, I know people have been doing it, but I don't know how I feel about it. But I do know one thing we need to do. We need to make our decision about our Ulta ticket, or Ultra ticket. Um,
So, I wonder when Las Vegas is going to reopen. Their casinos and their hotels and stuff like that. I don't feel comfortable going to Las Vegas right now. Maybe in August, depending how things are, I would feel comfortable going back out there. There's just so much uncertainty, isn't there? That we just like really don't know, like, you know, how the world's gonna be or what's gonna happen next. And, and I think that's the thing that's like the weirdest about all of it is that there's just so much uncertainty, right? Like we don't really know like what's gonna happen. You know what I mean? Um, so. Let's hope that we all continue to stay safe and stuff. You know, I was like talking to a friend of mine today and she was like, you know, like, I know we need to reopen stuff. She was like, but I wish there was like a common standard across the board of what that would look like, you know? Um, Maybe one of these days, you know, they'll say, like, this is how everything has to be, or... It just seems weird to me that, like, it almost kind of seems like... It'll be weird, like, in, you know, five years down the road, if everything's back to normal, and we talk about, like, do you remember when we couldn't leave our house? Do you know what I mean? It'll be so weird, won't it? Do you remember that time that, you know, like, all that stuff was going on, and we couldn't leave our house, and, you know how scary it was and I actually thought Alex was gonna I thought because he was like waiting to see what they were gonna say about like the extending the stay-at-home order and I thought when they said the 15th I thought he was gonna like go nuts but he doesn't seem to really care I said to him I said how, are you okay are you like bored or how are you doing and he said it just you know he said people think it's weird when I say this but it just feels like the longest Sunday ever <laughs> I'm like okay <laughs> I mean, I get that, really, you know, for him, because he's, like, gets up, and he eats, and then he, like, lays down and takes a nap, and, you know, watches, you know, 15 episodes of something, so I'm sure it does feel like the longest Sunday for him ever, you know? But when it started, he was all about the Pilates, and, oh, my God, you guys have to show you this. So I told you that Sarah dropped off on our front porch, the, uh, she dropped it off up there, the, the squirrel table. Let me show you. So Alex took a picture of this for me. You'll be able to see it. So this is our squirrel table and look, there was a cardinal out there eating off of the squirrel table. And Alex was like, your mom came to visit. And he took that picture for me. Do you see that? Isn't that so fantastic? I was so happy. I was like, aw. It literally is like a little picnic table for a squirrel. It's so cute. It's getting kind of hot in this car. <sighs> Mama, the biscuits are done. Let's go in and read some comments and see if that gives me something to talk about. I cannot believe for six weeks I have continued to find things to talk about in this car. Um, I really have to say, like, I'm rather proud of myself that I have sat in this car, like, every night. I, I mean, I love it. I enjoy it. Don't get me wrong. But that, like, I have been able to talk longer in this driveway than I have been able to talk just driving around, which is kind of funny, don't you think? Okay. So, let's go in here and get into the vlog and see what people had to say. Okay, looking good. Your video is performing as usual, it says. Let's go in here and see what it says. Okay. 
Alex said, what's your username again? No matter what I type, it's wrong. She's talking about words with friends, okay? But what's funny about this is that she typed, what's tour, T-O-U-R, using the name again. Maybe check your spelling out, because I'm just saying, gal, okay? No. It's the real Peter Mon. And it's my picture that I use for, like, my YouTube channel and my Twitter and everything like that. Um... Magic Me said, I love the times when this channel feels like a book channel. Aww. So many people put the yellow hearts. Thank you guys so much for the essential workers. I appreciate it. Um, Elizabeth gave a bunch of blue and yellow hearts. And she said, Peter, I now have an onion dip addiction. I'm kind of like, okay, this is kind of, it's going to. Not to upset anybody, but I'm kind of getting over the onion dip a little bit. I think what did it for me was A, I was literally consuming it every single day, and B, the homemade onion dip. I think it grossed me out a little bit when I saw the reservoir of water in there. So I'm kind of like slowly, I'm not over it yet. I'm not over it yet. The hell of a good is so good. It's the best onion dip out there. But I'm slowly kind of like getting out of the onion dip. Audrey gave a bunch of blue and yellow hearts. Thank you, Audrey. Dane said, thanks for reading my comment, Peter. I'm very interested to hear what you think of the book. I found it very hard to read at first. Now I'm enjoying it much more. We got this. She's talking about, we. she and I are going to read, well, we're reading, supposedly, but I haven't started it yet. Well, I don't know. We're just reading it kind of for fun. There's no serious commitment to this, Dane. Okay? But anyway, we're reading The House of Leaves that she mentioned. I have it in there. I haven't even, I haven't even begun to just, like, start it. I kind of, like, opened the first page. Um... A Genuine Mixture said, and we got this, by the way, Dave. A Genuine Mixture said, I still have to go to work, but I tell you, these two-hour vlogs are really getting me through this uncertain, uncomfortable time. Oh, uh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And thank you for working. I don't think we can say enough about the people that are still going out there working, you know? Um, when I was at the bank the two times ago, like, I'm real friendly with the people that work at the banks. I've been going there forever. And I said to uh, the girl that works there, I said, thank you so much for working. And she said, oh, yeah. She was like, thanks. And I said, are you over it yet? Yeah. She goes, yeah, I'm real over it. And I said, I can't remember how she said it, but she was like, um, yeah, a little bit. Um, and I said, like, having to, like, come in, like, because you're an essential worker or whatever. She's like, that and the fact that everybody just, like, gets to stay at home and, you know, we continue to have to come into work and, you know, then... And I was like, yeah, that would be hard. I think that would be hard, you know? Um, I don't know. But I'm really appreciative of the people that are still going out there and working. So thank you. Lone Wolf said, when are you going to start driving again? Well, I guess on May 11th is when I can start driving again, I guess. Are we, like, we're through the 15th. So I guess May 11th, May 15th. Um, hold on a second, stage two, I'm going to stage two. We're May 11th, it says on here. So, I'm looking right at it. Um, essential travel restrictions will be lifted May 11th for Marion County and Lake Counties. Um, for everybody else, it's May 4th. So, like, Tanya's in a different county, even though she's 10 minutes away. So, she's May 4th, but we're a week later at May 11th. So, a week from Monday. Okay, um, and then I'll start driving again. But I may stay here in the driveway sometimes. I've kind of liked this. It was funny because somebody said something, um, and they're like, well, what's the difference between, like, being in the driveway and driving? Well, part of the difference is that when I'm driving, I'm, like, having to pay attention to, like, what's going on in the road and stuff like that. And when I'm sitting here, I can just sit here and talk. And it's kind of nice to just relax and hang out. You know what I mean? It's like, um, I don't have to be like, oh, you know, like, okay, this, and where are we going to go, and what's going, you know what I mean? Like, I don't have to pay attention a lot, so it's nice. Um, Rosemary said, thank you so much for these vlogs. Lately, I've been feeling very alone and just lost. 
Um, thank you for everything. She goes on and then she says thank you for everything. Thank you so much, Rosemary. And hang in there. It's tough times, I know. Um, sending some love your way. Got my eye, it just started itching like crazy. Um, Bunny said, given that I have insider knowledge on this, I do not foresee the Apple store opening in the next week or two. I could be wrong, but it's unlikely. Thanks for the shout out. You're welcome, Bunny. Maria said from my January 2nd vlog, my from the very beginning, she said, in a recent video, you mentioned someone going back to see old videos. Great idea. Um, Jennifer said, I wish you would do a live chat on here or IG so we could all chat together. I cannot tell you how many times I have thought that I was gonna do a live stream throughout this whole thing. And um, especially on the weekends. Maybe I'll do one tomorrow or Sunday, but then I just don't end up doing it because it gets late in the evening and then I just kind of want to relax and spend time with Alex. And so I don't. You know, back in the day, what's interesting is I used to get on You Now and live stream like three times a week, if not more. I live streamed all the time on You Now. Um, oh my God. Okay, so here it is. Maricela found it and I found it too. I'm so glad she brought this up because I was going to talk about the stupid camera stopped. I don't even know how long it stopped, but anyway, I was talking about how Maricela commented about the baby beauty pageant documentary, and that's what it's called. I found it. I looked it up last night, um, and there's like really no mention of it anywhere, but this Jenny Foster who is in it that died of cystic fibrosis, so sad, she's a big part of it. And her mom had another little girl, and she's in Toddlers and Tiaras sometimes. But anyway, the YouTube channel, okay, is called Lindsay Marie, and it's L-I-N-D-S-A-Y space M-A-R-I-E. And it has Living Dolls, the entire series, split up into parts, like nine-minute segments. And then it has the um, other one, the... I just saw a picture of Eileen Warnos going. <laughs> Can you see? Eileen, don't be so angry, gal. Look at her. Come on, Eileen. Come on, Eileen. Okay. Anyway, and then it has the whole uh, baby beauty pageant thing. Come on, come back to focus for me. So anyway, if you want to check it out, it's over there on Lindsay Marie's channel. I screenshot it, which I think is very cool. Okay, now let's go back into the comments. But thank you, Maricela. Jennifer said, I do like when you chat about books. However, I can't afford any of the books that you chat about. I even did a th uh, free 30 day audible trial, but the books are like $20 a pop. Mm, okay, uh, I feel like I'm missing out. It makes me sad because I'm a big reader. I'm not, it's not your fault though. And I hope I can catch up and read, listen to any of these. I follow Reese Witherspoon on IG and she recommended the same books you chat about. Maybe once the world goes back to normal, normal, um, it'll be different. Anywho. So Jennifer, I think you actually mentioned something about like the, the books before. Um, and I don't know if you heard the next vlog, but I went in and I read your comment. I think this was your comment. And I uh, went in and I talked about the fact that if you have a public library card, there are two services and they are called Overdrive and Libby. And every library has either one or the other. And you can get free audiobooks. So you can go in there and you can check out any of these audiobooks. Um, they, there isn't always an availability. I don't know if I have my Overdrive like um, I think I have Libby. Maybe I deleted it because I don't use it as much anymore. But anyway, you go in there and you just search books online and then um, it pulls it up 
and then you just rent it like you're at the library, like the audiobook, and it's completely free. There's no service charge to it. You get to listen to it for two weeks. I know this because Mel uses it all the time. She never has a problem with it. Sometimes she has to be on a waiting list for it. But um, so, you know, libraries are a fantastic resource um, for being able to listen to books. You can read book ebooks. They have ebooks on there. Um, there it's a wonderful resource. Libraries have physical copy books that you can get for free. Um, on and on and on. So. Also, a lot of these books that I've talked about, if you get on websites like Thrift Books, I mean, some of these books are like 30 cents, 50 cents on Thrift Books that I've talked about. Um, so it's not like they're expensive. They're not like expensive books. They're really, really inexpensive books. Most of the books that, well, all of the books that Mel and I pick for the book club, we always make sure that they are able to be checked out at the library. Always. Every book that we talk about for the book club we've already checked to make sure is available at her public library which if it's available at her public library anybody can request it in the united states so um we do that so that and a lot of people in the book club actually you know use the library and you know that's how they get their books it's so hot in here all of a sudden so i uh don't want you to feel like that these books that I talk about like you can't afford there's ways to do it audible is expensive but like the exact same version that you're going to listen to on Audible, you can listen to for free from the library. The exact same one. Um, the only reason I love Audible is because I can go in there and get the books when, when I want to get them and I don't have to wait. And sometimes there's a waiting list and things like that. But Mel seems to get turnaround pretty quick on the books that she requests. So, yeah, I mean, the library has tons and tons and tons and tons of books. Um... So there's a lot of free outlets for listening to audiobooks if you want to do that. Overdrive and Libby. And just contact your library and call them and say, do you have a free service for listening to audiobooks? And if you don't have a card, that's probably something that you can still do online or over the phone right now, even if you can't get there because your library is closed. That's probably... God, it's so hot in here. That's probably something that you can still do. So you can still use the library services. And I greatly encourage that. I love the library. The stupid battery died. <laughs> I made sure that I had two batteries tonight. I actually have three. Well, this is the dead one that's burning up. And then, do I have my third one in here? But I don't know if the third one is charged or not. Where is the third one? Maybe I don't have it. But I do have a nail file. Um. <laughs> that nail file is about dead too oh here it is but I don't think this battery is charged so this is what we got um, anyway like I was saying Jennifer please go check out your library it's a really valuable resource and um, uh yeah, check back in with us and let us know what you find out. And if you want to listen to audiobooks, I know that that's a great place that you can get, you know, free audiobooks and you can listen to it over there. There's actually several um, different, like, websites online, too. Many of the audiobooks you can find on YouTube that, like, there's also different, um, like, sometimes other people have read them. And there is, I can't remember what the other website is. But if you like, if you Google free audiobooks, I'm sure it'll come up. But anyway, the library is what I would recommend um, because they actually buy the books from the authors and then they, um, or from the publisher, you know, and then they have them over there so you list, you can listen to them, which is why you have to check them out like everybody else and you have two weeks to listen to it, then you have to return it. So, because I think it's like a file that you buy or that they buy and then they rent out to you or loan to you. So yeah, the library is a great resource. So please um, go check that out and then let us know what you find out, okay? All right, next comment. Next verse, same as the first. <laughs> I don't have my reading glasses on, but... <laughs> okay, this is from Caitlin, who's... She left a comment on my video, like, the day before, 
yesterday or the day before, I can't remember, but it was kind of the same with like all these like capitalizations and, but anyway, she went back to my very first vlog on December 31st and January 1st. And she said, Peter Mon. <laughs> she always does that in the comments. OMFG, so cute to see this very first vlog. Oh my God, I'm obsessed. And holy SHI took Peter, you have committed and done the vlog and done it every day. Oh, makes me so happy you have been so loyal to your vlog. It's a beautiful thing, bravo. Totally binge watching until I fall asleep. Like you talking about your book and now you have it. So cool, just so, so, so cool. I freaking love you, Peter. Oh, thank you. Edit, P.S. So funny you say these vlogs are gonna be 15 minutes. Oh, how times have changed. Personally love the hour to two hour vlog, one to two hour vlogs. They have changed a lot, haven't they? I feel like it just got like brighter outside or something. Oh, maybe it was just because I turned that over light, overhead light off. Okay. Photo Love Labs Maria and Madel, Madam. Sagleton put all kinds of hearts. Um, Living Life with Lisa said, I read Pet Cemetery by Stephen King many moons ago during one of the scary parts. I covered my eyes to soon realize it wasn't going to pass until I read it. You know, it's interesting that you brought that up. So, I've had a few nightmares about PP since PP has passed, and it's always kind of in the tone of Pet Cemetery. And I've seen the new reboot of the movie. It was okay. I didn't hate it. Um, but there are parts of it that I just can't get out of my head. And I don't like thinking about, like, anything that way, right? And, um... Yeah, I've been thinking a lot about PP the last couple days. Not, like, in that way. Um... But I, I did, I had one really bad nightmare. I think I talked about it on here. I had one really bad nightmare that was kind of very Pet cemetery ish um, Like, Pee-Pee was alive, but I knew he wasn't alive, if that makes sense, in my dream. And um, I woke up really, really upset. I've, like, missed him so bad the last couple days, like, when I've been going to sleep at night. Or in the morning, you know, and I'll just like lay there and think about him because, you know, the last thing I would do before I went to bed was I would take out the pups to, you know, go potty and then we would come inside and I'd get them all situated and whatever in bed. And I still do that with Boo and Tucker. And they kind of have like their new system of what they do, you know, like before it was like, what is going on with my hair? Before it was always like, you know, PB would go out, then Tucker, then Boo, and now it's Tucker and Boo, like the order that they go in. And then, you know, now, back then, Tucker would kind of do his own thing, and then, like, Pee-Pee would go and, you know, pee, and Boo Radley would follow him all over the place. And, um... Now Boo Radley follows Tucker. It's very sweet, but there are times that I feel like they, like, they really do remember. Um... You know, Tucker used to stay up all night long with Pee-Pee, and he would play with toys, and at the end of the bed, I mean, all night long. They would stay up all night long, you know? And, I mean, to the point where Alex would wake up, and he would be like, you should settle down, because they were, like, just, like, being rowdy and stuff, like, all night long. It was so cute, you know? And, um, Tucker doesn't do that. He never, like, he plays with toys. But, like, throughout the day, or, like, if we're up in bed or whatever, he'll, like, rip at his monkey and, like, you know, pull the stuffing out and whatever. But, like, to lay there all night long anymore and just lay there and play with toys, he doesn't ever do that anymore, you know? He always, um, he kind of lays at the end of his bed and his comfort blanket. We have him stationed, so it's kind of, like, the whole length of the bed. And so he'll come down and he'll sleep on the second one that has, like, his toys and stuff that's closer to us. And he just goes to sleep, you know? And, um... I don't know. It's a different world without little peeps here. I miss them. I think about them all the time. Especially, like, with the weather being, like, I don't know. I just don't want to get real sad about it tonight. Sometimes it feels like it's been, like, 
you know, like a week, and other times it feels like it's been like months that he's been gone, but it just feels weird. Yeah, he was such a, such a great guy, such a great dog. All right. So anyway, um, let's see. Courtney said, oh my God, I had no idea that I will have to wait until October <laughs> for the last season of Schitt's Creek. I think I'm on season four right now. And Mary said, we just finished a series finale last year, last week in here in Canada. Um... Ina said, hey, Peter, let me know which coffee creamer is yummy. I need a fresh taste. LOL, love you. Okay, so my favorite is, I didn't really expect to get so sidetracked thinking about PP, but you know, I think sometimes about the fact that like I had no idea when that little guy came into my life what a huge impact he would have on my world. I had no idea, you know? Um, I mean, I can remember thinking how cute he was and stuff, but like, I had no idea that he would end up becoming like my best friend, you know, of life and, um, And like, I love Boo and Tucker so much, but it's such a different, like, they're such different relationships. Like, Boo Radley is such my baby, you know, like, and, um, it was funny, like, this is so stupid, but I was, like, looking at Jacqueline Hill's Instagram tonight, you know, because I've watched that stuff closely, and <laughs> what you have to do when you're a drama channel, and, you know, she was talking to her dogs, and her dogs are adorable, and you can tell she just loves her dogs so much, and she has three dogs, and, um, she was talking to them, and she has, like, such different relationships with each dog, and I, and I think you do, you know, like, when you have two or three dogs, you have such re different relationships with them, you know? And, um, like, Tucker has really become my little buddy, um, since PP passed away. I mean, like, Tucker is, like, by my side 24 hours a day. But he's real attention-seeking of both Alex and I. And, like, anytime we start, like, he's a barker anyway, but anytime we, like, start walking towards, like, the door just to, like, go to the garage or, you know, to, like, go outside and get the mail, like, he starts barking like crazy. And, like, you'll look at him and it's, like, he has, like, fear in his eyes. Like, he thinks we're gonna leave. And, um... And I'm like, it's okay, buddy. I'm just going to go outside. Come on, come with me. And sometimes I bring him out with me, but sometimes I don't because during the day, like outside in our front yard, there's literally so many people walking by and then they like don't know strangers and they run right up into him and like start barking and stuff at him. So, um, so sometimes I leave him in there and then they bark the entire time I walk out to the mailbox and walk back, you know? And, um... So Tucker has become like my little buddy since PP has been gone. But it's different, and Tucker seems sad a lot to me. Um, but then, like Boo will, but then Boo will want to play with him, and like Boo will like run at him to like wrestle and stuff. And then Tucker, like they're interesting to me as litter mates. And then Tucker won't have any part of it and won't want to play. I think Austin. Well, that battery died too, so we're gonna try battery number three and hope that that works.
Um, <laughs> I was just like sitting here talking, and then all of a sudden it like just closed and shut up. And I was like, like you know, cl it goes back in, it like stops and goes back in. And I was like, seriously, I thought I had like a full battery, and I didn't even see it go to the halfway mark and go down. And now it doesn't seem like it's focused. I'm having all kinds of problems with the camera tonight. Um. Is it like focused? It doesn't seem like it's focused. I can't see because I'm on my glasses. Okay, there it's focused. Um, what was I saying? Talking about them. But yeah, like sometimes, you know, Tucker won't want to play with Boo Radley. But then other days, like Tucker will want to play and Boo Radley won't. Um, especially outside a lot. Tucker's the one that wants to play with Boo Radley a lot, and Tucker and Boo Radley won't want to play. And he just kind of likes to sniff around the edge of, like, the yard and do his own thing. But then I also forget, you know, that they're 10 years old and they're going to be 11. I mean, I think because they're, like, fuzzy and cute and small, I keep on thinking that they're two years old, but they're not, you know? They're 10 years old. They're going to be 11 this year. And, um... Which makes me sad, too, and... I don't know. Do you ever just feel like you need to cry? Like, do you ever just feel like you need to, like, have a big cry? I feel like I just need to, like, I don't know, watch some movie that'll just make me cry my eyes out and just get it all out. I feel like I've been, like, like, I'm not sad about anything, like, like, I'm not sad about my life today. I'm sad about, like, I miss PP. -pee. I get sad about, like, life going on and getting older. I miss, you know... Um... Like, I have such a skewed sense of, like, the world, right? Because, like, I was watching Schitt's Creek, and somebody that's close to my age has a baby in the movie, right? And I was like, they're, like, my age. I'm, like, almost positive, like, in real life. Hold on a second. They're, like, my age, and they're supposed to be, like, their, their age in real life anyway. Um. Let's, hold on a second, let's see. 59. Um. 59 and, because it's a couple. 59 and 49. And so I'm sitting there and I'm watching it and they like just had a baby like in the show, right? And I'm like I feel like I have ever like this was the curse of my mom dying when she did that I felt like something was lit in me at that point where I was like my life is over. Like I'm going to be gone in 20 years. You know, and I think at some point I stopped I I started like living to some degree, but then in another way, I stopped living. And I started getting scared. And everything seemed like an ending to me and not a beginning anymore, you know? And all this kind of stuff. And I just wanted to stop time. I just want to stop time. I don't want time to go on anymore. And I don't. I don't, right? But, like, the reality is... Like, I have a lot of living in me left. I mean, I'm not... I know it's a TV show, but I have friends of mine that are literally my age that, like, just had a kid. Like, in reality. Like, I have friends of mine from high school. And not... And, you know, and people that I went to high school with that I'll see on Facebook and whatever. They literally have, like, infants and three-year-olds and things like that. Um, and I'm like... Here I am thinking that we're like, the world is over and, you know, like my life is almost done and I'm at the end of my life or something. And people are having kids and starting families. And I'm like, that's just not the reality. And I have some real skewed sense of just endings and everything. And I think that's because my mom died young. And like, I, I see it like in to that degree. Does that make sense? But like, you know. Even if that were the case, I still have 20 good years left. 20 years is a long time, you know? Or, like, you know, my dad's age, 30 years. And, uh, I mean, that was, like, my high school reunion. So, I mean, a lot has happened in 30 years. You know what I mean? Like, a lot. So, it's like, I have a lot of life ahead of me. And um, I just, I, I sometimes get stuck in that. And that kind of sadness of, like, I don't know. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, I think I'm afraid to live, but like I'm, and I'm afraid to move on and move. And I don't like that word "move on," but you know what I mean. Like moving through stuff, I'm sometimes afraid to, maybe not move on is the right word, but allow my life to go forward one step at a time. Like I'm afraid, you know, of like leaving 
the past behind, I think. Um, because there was safety in that to me. But like, I think that you have to, I think you have to keep on moving forward. And I don't know, I've been like stuck in memory lane the last week and I think I just need to sit and just like watch some really sappy movie that makes me cry. I've got a couple movies that I watch that just make me ball my eyes out. And I think I just need to watch a movie and just ball my eyes out and listen to some sad music like Bye Bye by Mariah Carey, you know, or whatever, some other songs that make me cry and I just need to get it out of my system, you know? And I think like that will be really healthy for me. Sometimes that's what I do. Um, and just kind of like pull myself out of that hump a little bit. And I'm always going to miss Pee Pee, you know? He was like such a unique dog. He was such a... He just was a, he was a, a great little guy, you know? And I feel very blessed to have had him. And I'll never forget, you know, like the vet when she told me that he had heart disease, you know, and I said to her, I said, um, well, how long do you think that he will make it? And she said, I, think she was, I can't even remember now. I'd like to see him make it till 13 or whatever she said. It was like a year and a half. She'd like to see him make it to, a, I think it was October. So it was 13 and a half, I think is what she said. And, um, he did. You know, he did, he made it there. And I remember this Halloween, I was like outside with him and I remember I looked at him and I, I thought to myself like, this is our last Halloween together, Pee Pee, you know? Like I just knew it. But I remember when I said that to her and I started like crying immediately. And she said, and she was actually thinking six months and she told me a year and a half. <laughs> I love our vet though, but I started bawling my eyes out. And she said, Peter, she said, you know, we know when we have animals as pets that they aren't going to live to be 40 or 50 and they're not going to live forever. And I said, um, which we had talked so much because she's got, you know, like young girls and um, their like childhood dog had just like passed away. And um, so she was going through like, this was like when PP first got diagnosed. And I looked at her and I said, you could have told me that he would live to be 40 or 50 and I would still be bawling my eyes out right now. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Time is this like strange thing, isn't it? You know, I think about this. You guys, May 11th was my first booktube video. I'm coming up on four years of being on booktube. And, um, I felt good. I needed to get some of that out. I miss you, buddy. I miss you, peeps. May 11th is four years since I've been on booktube. And um, that was when I made a commitment to sit down and start posting videos consistently on a channel. I posted videos before, but just silly stuff. And um, then the Peter Mon channel came, you know, that September. And then the vlog channel came December 31st and um, I had the Peterisms channel but I hadn't really done it was called my so-called healthy life and it was a weight loss channel <laughs> go figure and um, I wasn't doing anything with it that came later that I turned it around and then the review channel I started a year ago December no a year ago like September so it'll be coming up on like two years this fall August or September so I have been on YouTube for only four years. And to the level and the capacity that I'm doing YouTube like now, like I did then, 
really only three years. Um, yeah, really only a little over three years. Is that right? Because I was, you know, had my booktube, and then when I started my vlog, and I would say, like, that full capacity, where I was, like, posting vi videos on, like, a pretty, you know, like, daily basis. I was posting drama videos on a daily basis, booktube videos on a daily basis, and my vlog every single day. And that was, like, starting in that January of 2017, 18, yeah. Um, and I think about the fact that, like, I've only been on YouTube for four years. Like, four years ago, right now, I hadn't even made my first booktube video. Like, that's crazy to me. Like, that's crazy to me, you know? Um, like, I feel like it's been, a, like, a lifetime that I've been on YouTube. All the people I've met, all the things that have happened, all the opportunities I've had, all the videos I've made, you know, all the view that I've interacted with. Like, it's just been amazing. Like, I can't believe it's only been four years. It really seems like a lifetime. It really, really does. Like, as far as like all that I've experienced on YouTube, the good, the bad, and all of it, the ugly and everything, you know, that just, and it's been mostly good. I would say it's been, you know, 90% good. Honestly, it feels like it's been like 15 years. It doesn't feel like it's been four years, you know? So, um, it's crazy sometimes. It feels like it's been a really, really long time, you know? And I've loved it, you know? And I'm excited to see what comes in the next four years. I do have an exciting project that I'm starting. I announced it on my Peterisms channel today. It's gonna be on my Peterisms channel. Um, and I'm not gonna say anything about it or talk about it or anything until the day that I post it. And then literally I'm just gonna be like, post it and here it goes. I tried to figure out what channel I thought, and I've talked to, to a lot of people about it. Um, consulted with them. That's what I joked instead of my Peterson's channel. I mean, I didn't consult with anybody, but I talked to several people, YouTubers and just friends of mine in my real life and asked what they thought. And I haven't had one person say, yeah, I, th I think that's a stupid idea. Um, the consensus is it belongs in the Peterson's channel. Um, and it's a project that I'm working on. So, but it won't be for like two months or a month or two or three but because it's something I'm working on and I'm not going to sit here and be like this is what I'm working on and then never follow through with it and never post it so I'm, I've decided that I'm just going to do it and then like post it afterwards like when it's done but I'm really excited about it so I've got some new things coming up in the works so many people on my drama channel have been asking me to do like magazine videos and do some of the stuff that I did when I first started that channel, you know, and I'm such a believer that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I think I might start going back and doing those just every once in a while. I, I won't do them like every day, but what I will do is like maybe post two videos one day a week and that will be like the extra video that I post for the people that have watched that channel for a long time and want those or like the Craigslist ads and things like that. I'm trying to figure out some ways to like mix some things up a little bit. With BookTube I'm completely happy doing hauls and tag videos and talking about the book, you know, all that, doing vlogs and all that kind of stuff over there. Um, so I probably won't change that up a whole lot. And this channel, of course, will just get longer and longer, probably. <laughs> It'll be six-hour vlogs one of these days. You guys will be like, oh, my God. But anyway, I, somebody asked me a question, and I never even answered it, I don't think, because I went down memory lane. Not a bad thing. Ina asked, hey, Peter. <laughs> Sorry, Ina. Let me know which coffee creamer is yummy. I need a fresh taste. LOL, love you. I love the Starbucks Cinnamon Dolce um, Latte one. Oh my God, Caitlin put another <laughs> vlog on here. Um, or the comment. This comment is literally so long. <laughs> You're the freaking best! <laughs> I love her comments. She cracks me up. Okay, I'm gonna go in there and read that comment in a second. 
Um, Sarah said, love you, Peter. Thank you for being you. Thank you. Beatrice said, I love getting my soda ready with you. So fun. Aww. The ginger said, in an, in an alternate universe, Peter would be a fantastic Lyft Uber driver. Okay, so one night I talked about that show on here. It was, this wasn't too long ago. Do you remember that show, Capsi Ca Taxi Cab Confessions? <laughs> I loved that show. Okay. <laughs> Heather said, I only wa watched... Sharknado in the sequel because a kid that bullied me relentlessly all through high school was in those movies. Oh, that's so sad. But now he's in those movies. So she said it was kind of cathartic all those years later. <laughs> exactly. Because he was in those horrible movies. But I kind of like those horrible movies, to be honest. Um, the one that takes place, I think it's in New York, and like the sharks are like flying out the building. They're just so bad. Have you seen them? Jay said, May 1st was supposed to be the beginning of exercising and eating better. I did great until I found a box of toaster strudels I had forgotten about. Damn it, Janet. Okay, and this is what I love. <laughs> the comment underneath there, not like, oh, you can restart it. Or, hey, tomorrow's a new day is from Mary, and she said, LOL, what flavor? <laughs> That's what I wondered. I was like, were they cinnamon strudel? Because I would want to have them. Okay. Um, Brittany started watching Schitt's Creek. Yay! Maria said, I like that you read your comments. Oh, thank you. I didn't used to do that as much as I do now. Um, Emily said, she does emojis for essential workers. And she said, I'm not a huge reader, but I love true crime. So I bought the book for May on Google Books. It was just under $10 and her girlfriend's book is only a dollar ninety nine, so I got that one too. I can't. So there's another option for people out there, Google Books. I can't wait to sit in on the book club. Yay, Emily! But I'm not sure where it's posted or when this even happens. But I think it would be fun. Can anyone help me out? Okay, so I will talk about it closer to the time over there. But the announcement will be over on my BookTube channel. There is also on Goodreads. If you go to Goodreads, it's called uh, a True Crime Book Club. It's listed underneath. All of my booktube videos, um, you can go to it from there, from the link. Mel and I are also, this will be started probably in the next week, are starting a Facebook group for a true crime book club. Because we want to have all the information in one area that is accessible. I know a lot of people like Facebook. A lot of people have Facebook. It's an easy place for a lot of people to go. So we feel like that would be a great place to just have all the information and then people can go over to Goodreads and they can participate in the threads if they want to. They can watch my videos, but they don't have to. They can participate in the live book discussion, but they don't have to. But all the information will be over there. So we are gonna be starting that group and I will let you guys know as soon as that group is up and going and it will all be over there. But um, I will tell you more about when the date for the discussion will be. It's usually the last Sunday of every month at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but sometimes we change it. Okay, and I said I might be changing it because it's Memorial Day weekend, but I don't know if I'll be doing that or not. Um, Mrs. Fodd said, I'm dying to be able to spend all day floating around in the lake and grill. Texas is already so hot. Fun day. Stephanie said, Peter, I think your hair looks nice tonight. Thank you, Stephanie. I appreciate it. Love you, gal. Um, Lisa said, Peter, who's driving down my street? Peter, lock my doors. I freaking love you, Peter. <laughs> and, um... Uh, Raining Pumpkin Queen said, my hubby is a mailman and working so hard, so thank you for thanking essential workers. Aw. Well, thank him for working and tell him to be safe, which is what other people said. Bless him and may he be safe. Um, and I pray he be safe. Ela said, so good to see you today, Peter. I love book talk. I pre-ordered a book about whether or not Charles Manson could have been part of 
but I don't know what this word is. And if there was some kind of CIA involvement, it's called Chaos, and it's by Tom O'Neill. I'm not a big Charles Manson fan, but for anybody out there, and let us know how it is. If it's good, I will read it. Sean, hey, Sean, said Peter, I love when you talk about books you're, you're reading or have you're, you've read or are reading. I've gotten so many recommendations from, you, recommendations from you. I haven't been disappointed yet. Thanks. You know what? I want somebody to tell me if they've read. It keeps on coming up in my recommended. It's called, I think, Call Your Daughter's Home. Has anybody read this book? It's supposed to be like really, really good. And it's supposed to be like Lovers of the Secret Life of Bees and uh, Where the Crawdads Sing Will Love. I think it's called Where the... Call your daughter home or call your daughter's home or something like that. Abby said, Hey, Peter, saw the title and thought, Oh no, Peter is out of peanut butter bites. Is, was the title How Will I Go On or something like that? Um, everybody's saying they love when I talk about books. I know there's somebody out there that doesn't. <laughs> Karen said, I love when you talk about books. Oh, this is Karen from the book club. Hey, Karen. Um, she said she likes when I go stream of consciousness on books over here. I need to start doing that as vlogs on my booktube channel is what I need to do. Thank you, Karen, for kind of re reminding me of that. Um, okay, Patrick said, you should also listen to drag superstar Willem's I love Willem. Song Eileen on YouTube as extracurricular besides the books. What is that? Okay, hold on a second. I want to look it up. The lyrics. <laughs> this song's about some poor white trash who swallowed trucker loads for cash. <laughs> Even though she was a big lesbian, her... Oh my lord! <clears throat> this is horrible! <laughs> It's, I mean, it's kind of really funny, but um, it's also kind of really bad. It's like, but I mean, it's, it's, it's Eileen Warnos. So anyway, I didn't know that there was that song. I'll have to listen to it later. Um, what do people say to this? Mandy said, this is a perfect way to end this vlog tonight. Mandy said, I love this comment. She said, I feel like 10 years from now when I look back on this pandemic and remember all the chaos and fear, I will think of Peter Mon and his onion dip and then I will smile. I don't know why that makes me so happy. Um, she said, love you. And then Jenny said, from the block, said, yes, ma'am. And, um... I can't even read it now. <laughs> Joel Lindahl said, yes, I love this. I feel the same way. Bunny Cake said, and pretzel bites. Magic Me said, definitely. And then closing the car windows every time something moves in the shadows. This has been so amazing. It's like been so helpful for me just to get like through stuff, you know? It's been um, having this vlog to come. I don't know why I'm so emotional tonight. I don't know what the hell is going on with me. <laughs> It's okay though, let it out, right? And I don't know who sent me this little thing of Kleenex, but it's been really perfect. Um, <laughs> reminds me of something my mom would have had back in the day. Uh, but my mom always had Kleenex in like the pockets that were sweaters and shirts and sweatshirts. But um, this vlog has been so fantastic for me through all of this. You know, it's like. And as much as I'm ready to like, get out and get back to normal, 
whatever that means. I also feel like this was a moment in time that I got to spend like a lot of time with my husband. And why did it just go in and out like that? It's so weird. I also feel like this is a time that I got to spend a lot of time with my husband, and my dogs. And it made me reevaluate what is important. And it made me reevaluate my priorities. And um <laughs> and I've eaten a lot of good food and watched a lot of good shows and listened to a lot of good books. And um, this vlog has been kind of a really nice place for me to come at the end of the day and just be able to just like let it all out. And I'm so thankful for that, that you guys have given me that. And um, that you guys have gotten something out of it as well. That's all I've ever wanted to do with this vlog is just, you know, help somebody get through making dinner or driving to work or putting on their, you know, makeup or getting ready for work in the morning or going to sleep at night, you know, and when I was growing up, I loved talk radio and, um, I listened to talk radio stations that were on only on the AM stations, you know, and I didn't even know what they were talking about half the time. And I would listen to that and fall asleep, or I would listen to like old school radio tapes like Fibber McGee and Molly or the shadow or, um, dragnet. My mom would listen to him, you know, with me and because I had a hard time falling asleep when I was a kid sometimes. And she would bring in a pillow and a blanket and she would sleep on the floor right below me with like the fan going on. And then she would go into her room. She would switch. She would get up when she thought I was asleep and she would switch the tape to the other side. And then she would go to her room so she could like, you know, watch the news or whatever. And I always fell asleep listening to radio tapes and to, um radio shows and talk radio. And so the fact that other people now fall asleep listening to me, it means a lot. Um, and I feel like it's kind of come full circle. So anyway, so thank you. And um, all right, I'm not even making sense anymore, so I'm just gonna close this off now. Um, I'm gonna stop this really quick because if I don't, it's gonna, it's almost at 30 minutes. So it's, I've got like two minutes left, so it'll stop before I, cause you know what, I have the longest outro in the world, so hold on. Okay, um, so anyway, thank you guys so much for watching to this point in the vlog. And if you made it this far, please give this video a big thumbs up. It would really mean the world to me. And make sure that you're still subscribed to all of my channels, please, all of my channels. And, um, also, put a blue heart in the comment section below and whatever kind of emojis you want for the essential workers. Just make sure that it's lit up with color in the comment sections. And um, I hope you guys are having an amazing Saturday. I can't believe it's Saturday already. Fridays don't seem like Fridays and Sundays don't seem like Sundays and Tuesdays. Every day seems like a Tuesday. But anyway, I hope you're having an amazing Saturday. Unless you have other plans. But like I always say, don't have other plans. Make the most of your day. Do something fun today. If it's nice, get outside, you know, and try to get some fresh air if you can. And maybe start a new book or read it, you know, something new or coloring books or paper, paper dolls. <laughs> I used to love paper dolls back in the day. Oh, God. Can't... <laughs> That takes me way back. I have a Miss America paper doll set from like 1986. <laughs> Somebody bought me when I was in high school because they knew that I had loved paper dolls before that. Um, it's probably a collector, collector's edition now. But anyway. And um, get out, do something fun. Watch some new show, some new movie. There's actually a new show on Netflix called Hollywood that looks really good that I want to watch. And uh, so just start something new. And if you have started a new show, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let me know what you think of Outer Banks because I'm wanting to watch it at some point. Uh, and if you've watched Hollywood, let me know what you think about that as well. And also the show Waco because my cousin Caroline said it was really good and I want to know if it's good. Um, and also do something that will make yourself proud when you look back on it tomorrow or next week or a month from now or a year from now or 69 years from now or 60 years from now, whenever. And if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. Make sure that you do all your daily affirmations every night and every morning. Um, when you get up in the morning and before you go to bed at night, you say to yourself one really good thing, like, you know, uh, you are loved, you are important, you matter, you are good, you are worthy of good things, you're a good person, you're a good person. And, um, I'm like losing my mind at the end of this. I'm like, what else do I say? Um, 
<laughs> this is the the first time I have forgotten my outro. Anyway, make sure that before you go to bed every night that you uh, say to yourself, um, tomorrow is going to be an amazing day. Tomorrow I'm going to be happy, joyous, and free all day long. And if I want to start my day over because I get kind of off track or I'm not having a good day, I can. And... Um, uh, when you wake up in the morning, tell yourself, today is going to be an amazing day full of opportunity and happiness and laughter, and I'm going to be happy, joyous, and free all day today, and if I get off track and I start getting, you know, like not having a good day, I can start my day over whenever I want. All I have to do is walk in the other room or walk outside and say, I'm starting my day over right now, and just take a breather. Take a five-minute breather. Say, I'm going to give myself five minutes, and then when I walk back out, it's going to be a new day, and... um yeah, and you could even sing that song by Celine Dion. Didn't she sing a song called A New Day or something like that? Anyway, I kind of liked Celine Dion back in the day. Anyway, and um, don't forget to uh, make sure that you reach out to somebody and let them know how much they mean to you. Call them up and say, hey. Well, also, don't forget to do all your daily affirmations, your gratitude lists, your prayers, if you do prayers, and or if you're you know not a spiritual religious person whatsoever, just... Sing to the universe and stand outside with the wind and just be part one with the earth, you know? And um, make sure that you reach out to somebody and let them know how much you mean to them or how much they mean to you and say, hey, I just want to let you know I was thinking of you. I love you and um, I really appreciate you being in my life. And uh, also practice random acts of kindness. But don't tell anyone. We're just doing it to be good people. We're just doing it to put the goodness out there, to put the compassion out there in the world and to... The more we practice it without telling people, the more it becomes a habit of just doing good deeds for the act of do doing good deeds, right? And um, I think that's what it's all about, Charlie Brown. Anyway, um, I hope you guys are having an amazing day. I love you, and thank you so much for watching, and I will see you tomorrow. Love you. Bye. Love ya. I just wanted to say I love you and good night one more time because tonight, I don't know, I got so flustered at the end because the emo the, just the vlog got me so emotional tonight just thinking about the fact that um, I have this place to come to, you know, every single day at the end of the day and just, um, and I have all of you out there that are so nice and so kind to watch as well as leave me these amazing comments and I just want to tell you how much I love you one last time and I really really appreciate it so thank you and I bid you good night and I will see you tomorrow bye love ya